Hello and welcome to show number seven of Global Global Perspectives with Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello, Mikula. Hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to ask a few questions about evolution because it seems like um, today is a whole new phase in uh, perhaps the evolution of humanity. And I also heard you in a conversation uh, a few days ago explain about evolution, and it was very interesting for me. Um, I also brought up this topic on my Facebook page, and a lot of people responded. They asked some questions, made some comments, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to fit some of those comments and questions into today's conversation as well. So... I'm sorry? I need to go ahead, please. I'm with you. So before we begin, uh, I'd like you to explain. You are both a Kabbalist and a scientist, okay? Um, And both science and Kabbalah discuss um, the evolution of the world, the development of the world. Can you just briefly explain uh, about the difference or commonalities between the Kabbalistic explanation of evolution and the scientific explanation of evolution. So, so we know where we are. I'll try. Briefly, I don't know, but I'll try. Basic approach of Kabbalah, as opposed to the basic approach of science. The basic approach to evolution is based on what we see in nature. Like it says that a judge has only what his eyes see. The question is, whose eyes? Meaning that if we take into account the evolution of nature, our will to receive, the way it develops in us, it develops through the degrees of the still, vegetative, animate, and then reaches the human level. And then man has developed through the levels of the still, vegetative, and the animate internally until he reaches a state where he becomes king over nature, ready to destroy the entire planet, hostile towards everything and everyone around him, because this is what nature demands of him, his ego demands him to be king of the world. But man isn't alone. We have 8 billion people at the moment, and therefore all of these billions, they are in some kind of struggle, kind of struggling with each other in different ways, and therefore our life is kind of cumbersome and unpleasant. Nonetheless, it is clear to all of us that were our ego not to control us, to control our society, we would have been like animals. Every person would have received only what he needs in order to exist, demanding nothing beyond what his body wants. But because beyond our bodily desires, we have other desires, drives, urges, yearnings. Therefore, we develop ourselves in all directions. The main thing is to want everything, know everything, control everything. And this is where all of our troubles especially come from. Meaning, on the one hand, our ego develops us, allows us to develop, leading us, bringing us to control nature, On the other hand, our control of nature is to our detriment because we don't want to control to everyone's benefit. We don't feel that we're in an integral world where all of us are interdependent. But man, he doesn't care about destroying our planet. And we see that even 
we see that he won't stop even before the last action that he'll do before this world explodes. And we're like in a boat at sea where one person's drilling a hole, the other person's telling, why are you drilling? We'll all, we'll all drown. He says, what do I care? I feel like it. that's that. And you, I don't take you into consideration. This is actually where we are in history. If I understand correctly, is the Kabbalistic explanation of evolution, right? Ken. Okay. Yeah. Um, in science, the, the predominant theory until not long ago was the Darwinian theory of uh, the, the natural selection, etc. But um, in recent years, there have been more theories, such as uh, Richard Dawkins, uh, the selfish gene, and other uh, theories also, also came up. How do you explain evolution? What, what makes evolution happen, according to the way you see it? The will to receive. The will to receive pleasure, the will to control, to dominate. It's all in all called the will to receive that exists from the tiniest particle of nature and up to the entire universe. This is what causes matter to develop, and therefore there's the development of the still, vegetative, animate human beings. This is the inner force existing in matter. According to you, basically the engine of, of evolution is a desire, the will to receive, as you call it. That's yeah. the engine, the driving force for evolution, right? Yeah, yeah it is. And that evolution also caused the appearance of our physical universe? That will to receive caused the appearance of our physical universe? Of course. I'm sorry, your microphone is muted. Mm -hmm. A physical universe and what came before it and what will come after it, it's all the will to receive that exists in every particle of creation. Uh, is that driving force also relevant to our internal development? Not just physical development, but our emotional, mental, uh, spiritual development? Of course. The will to receive is at the very foundation of all matter and eventually still vegetative, animate people and each of them and in every possible form, it's all the general desire to receive pleasure, dominate, develop. Okay, so that brings me to my next question. Uh, we human beings uh, normally see ourselves as the apex of, of creation, the zenith, the top of creation. First of all, are we? I mean, looking at, at what we've done with the world, um, you can't really say we've done a very good job. So are we really the top of creation? <laughs> Unfortunately, let's put it this way. In the model, we are. In model, we are the most exalted creatures, but most exalted could be also the lowliest, the lowest, meaning we're the strongest in creation, but we don't know how to correctly use this force. In what sense are we the strongest? Intellectually, in relation to our mind. Next to our mind, we have the desire to dominate. And this desire to, to control the desire for power comes from nature. It's the highest force that controls all of nature. But in us, it's revealed in its inverse form. And here, we're really, we have a big problem. If I take you up on your word, and we are the top of creation, but... Uh, uh, we're misusing our brains, our intellectual capacities, and we're basically destroying everything. So the end result 
of the evolution of the most developed creature is that that creature will destroy itself and life on earth with it. Well, with it. Is that correct? Is this the... A little bit duke. Not exactly. Not exactly. The, the problem is that eventually in the developmental process throughout it we'll start discovering that we can't stand the revelation of evil the revelation of the evil of our own nature and we'll have to suffer, undergo very serious blows that will bring us to a point where we'll have no choice but to invert ourselves to a good way to develop in a good way, good towards others and towards myself. But it's a very lengthy and hard way. At some point we will get there, but it's an extended evolution. So so you're saying that evolution has not ended. It's continuing now, right? Can't. Yeah, of course. So what stage in our evolution are we in now? We are at the beginning of the evolution of man. You said we are beginning to develop the human in us? Yeah, yeah. We're animals, we're, we're evil animals. Normally when you think of evolution, you think of some natural force that's acting on its own. And it's acting on the created beings, on all animals and all living species, but it's without their choice. You you are saying we as if we do have a choice, do have as if we have free will. Ken. We do. We have free choice. We have the choice to understand why are we developing the way we are and how can we change the course of our development. Okay. Currently, the path of our development, of our evolution, is negative, right? It's all destructive. It's, it's every person uh, against everyone else, you know, each one to himself, and that's it. And you're saying we have to... What are you saying? What do we have to do instead of that? To understand what is truly to our benefit. That our ego, our narrow ego, for it not to tempt us with foolish things, but for us to understand how much we have to change in being good towards others, towards nature, towards everything. And this will make things good for us to change our nature towards everything and everyone. This will be to our benefit. I've heard of people doing a lot of crazy stuff, but I've never heard of a person changing his genes, his ego. How can I change who I am? <laughs> that crazy, yes. What I'm explaining is too crazy. Without that, we can't survive. We won't be able to survive. Viruses or different natural disasters, heat waves, cold waves, hurricanes, whatever. They will finish us off. We won't be able to survive. And really it says so. Because we are opposed to nature and everything. very clear, but my question is, okay, so we have to change. How do we change ourselves? How do we change our egos? Our most basic uh, element 
through explanation. Let's explain to each other and to everyone that this is what we have to do. If we start explaining this to everyone, then by that we also awaken the general force in nature for it to influence us. Not that we ourselves change, but that it will change us and we will change. And I'm telling you that I too have gone through this phase and I have seen how much nature has the ability to change man, even the worst, by starting to take others into consideration. But what made you change into a person who is considerate of others? By learning, by studying Kabbalah, where it explains about the need for this change. We have to explain to each other. What do we need to explain to each other in order to change? that we have to be in an integral connection between us, everyone, to the benefit of everyone, that only this way will we correctly be interconnected in a good and nice way and with nature. And by this, we promise us a good life, ourselves a good life. Can you describe uh, paradise, the Garden of Eden? Ganeret, badai. Garden of Eden, paradise, sure. Yes. It's excellent. Uh, what, is that, what does that good mean? Because you said we become integral. This good is that a person starts feeling that he is above his nature, that he's rising above his ego, that he really sees, as it says, from one end of the world to the other meaning the entire nature, before he was born, lived here, after he leaves this world to different other forms and exists in them, he sees it all at every point of his development entirely. Suppose from now until the end of correction and beyond, everything that can happen with him, to him, he feels and sees the entire reality, his entire life on all levels in all times and beyond time. Okay, I want to go back uh, just for a minute. Um, <clears throat> until, um, I don't know, not not long ago, um, when we were talking about evolution, we were talking about physical evolution, evolution of new species, uh, new species adapting to their environment, etc. Now we're talking about uh, emotional, mental, spiritual evolution, something else. So first of all, has physical evolution ended? Evolution physics. Physical evolution ended a long time ago when we turned into human beings out of monkeys and we got the, we have received the evil inclination. The evil inclination is already development on the human level and this develops us to being human beings, to rise to a spiritual degree which is above above the animate level. So, so, from the moment that a human being received the, the evil inclination, the ego, yes? Uh, can you say that evolution has evolved into a new phase, into the phase of uh, internal development instead of external development, physical development? Yeah, this happened about 6,000 years ago. We've been evolving internally instead of externally. Correct? Also externally. There are different things developing, like tools that we work with, society, the relations we work with, we, the relations between us, but all that was done by the evil inclination. So the change that uh, we should undergo at this point is not a physical change, but an internal, emotional, spiritual, however you define it, change. Right, true, true. 
Yes. Evil inclination, right? Which is what? The ego? Since the times of Adam Rishon, we have already received the evil inclination, and since then, we had to integrate with one another correctly and correct ourselves. Um, the way we can change ourselves, because we are born with this ill will inside, and we can't change ourselves. But you said that we can change. Uh, through explaining to each other, right? We can change by explaining this to each other, yes. But the person explaining to me or telling me or teaching me is also as evil as I am. So how will that help me not become selfish, not become egoistic myself? Because it doesn't matter that you're all egoists, but by studying how you're supposed, how nature is supposed to change you, you awaken the good force in nature that changes you. In nature, there are two forces: the positive and negative forces. We're using, or up until now, practically in everything, we've used the negative force, the negative intention to my own benefit and to the detriment of others. And we can start changing by the positive force of nature to the benefit of everyone. And alone, by myself, there's no way I can tap into that positive force, right? That's what you're saying. Impossible. Impossible. You have to be in a society and through society to receive this impression and to realize it in society. So, even though I am built with nothing but the ego and the ego is my driving force, there is a way I can kind of pull on myself another driving force that will start operating me instead of my original driving force. And I can do that through the society, through working with other people. Ken. Yeah. Ken. Yeah. Only through working with other people. It'll invert into the force of good. Nothing disappears. I only balance it out with the good force, the positive force, and with these two forces, the evil and good inclinations together, I advance toward the goal, which is the middle line between them. is by working with other people on that change. Yeah. There's nothing else that we can do. So evolution can happen only if we start working with other people on creating this evolution. This is why we were created the way we were in this broad society. To evolve, will I actually evolve? Ken. Yeah. So today, evolution depends on me, on each one of us. We're starting a phase where evolution depends on us. It means that we have entered the period of the last generation. The last generation. Yes. Um, there's a question about the, the, the um, Messianic uh, age. Is that to any, in any way really related to the last generation or that's a different story? Can, can, but that yeah, 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 of course. Only Messiah, meaning that positive force that exists in nature, for it to pull us toward the purpose of life, of creation. It's called Messiah, from the Hebrew word Moshech, to pull. The last generation is the beginning of evolution, the spiritual evolution, and 
we have to evolve in this generation. Let's hope that it'll end quickly and we will reach the peak of our development. Because it's both the first and the last generation, meaning it actually symbolizes the beginning of the development of the collective, not like there were the first people from Adam Rishon and on, where there were only individuals. But now it is an era in which everyone has to enter this phase in the generation of the Messiah under this great force, this great light that pushes us towards one, towards unity, towards connection, where we will already feel a good and eternal life. Dr. Lightman, I want to thank you very much. Um, you gave you gave me and I'm sure everyone who watches this a lot in this conversation uh, my personal biggest takeaway from this conversation is the fact that uh, I am in charge of my evolution if I choose to work with others then we can evolve into uh, connected beings not selfish beings but uh, unselfish beings so it's very optimistic and thank you very much for an amazing global perspective. I'm happy that you got the correct impression. Thank you. All the best.